Hi everyone! Welcome back to our online youth service. This is Coach Nikki and I hope that you are here and um, expectant to hear from the Word of God. Today actually is the second week already of our new series, Right Choice. And I'm uh, very glad no, that uh, Coach Adrian was the one who uh, preached to all of us the last week and started this series. And he talks about honoring God with our bodies. And you know, we're gonna continue on in this series and I am very excited because I believe that the Lord has a word for each and every one of us. You know, before uh, we go and dive into the word, maybe for some of you, you know already, especially no, kung uh, maraming beses na kayo na uh, nagjo-join ng ating youth service, whether online, here sa Facebook page natin, sa YouTube, or even sa Zoom, maybe nakakasama namin kayo. If that's the case, maybe you know already the, that one of the things that I really love doing is building Lego. So, one time, nakita ko yung mga brothers ko, yung mga little brothers ko, nandun sila sa sala namin. And they were actually um, sorting yung mga Legos nila no, according to the color. So, meron akong picture dyan actually. So, makikita nyo, ayan, uh, ang ginawa nila dahil halo-halo na yung Lego nila. Actually, hindi ganyan yung itsura nung umpisa, no? Uh, magkakadikit yung mga yan kasi nga yung mga na-build nila na Lego before, tapos uh, na-disassemble nila. And so, finally, they decided they want to sort it out uh, by colors, no? Gusto nilang pag-pair-pairin uh, according to the color. So, Nung nakita ko sila, sabi ko parang uh, ang ganda ng ginagawa nila. So sabi ko agad sa kanila, let me help you guys. Ganito lang gawin yan. And so nung lumapit ako sa kanila, I actually showed them something. I was looking for this um, item na very helpful especially if you love uh, building Lego. It's actually called a Lego separator. No? Yung orange uh, na item na yan nakasama kapag bumibili kayo ng mga Lego. Sabi ko, let's use this one. You guys need this para hindi kayo nahirap. At kasi isa kong brother, yung minsan kinakagat niya na yung Lego. <laughs> kasi nga para maghiwalay. So hirap na hirap siya or nasusugatan. Na. Actually, nasugatan talaga yung isang brother ko nung uh, ginagawa niya yun. Sabi ko, ganito lang kasi yan. Lika, tulu, turu, turuan ko kayo. So, ganito lang. So, one of my brothers said, so, merong uh, parang tag-iisa kami, okay, ng, ng Lego separator, sabi ko. Sabi niya, ate, how do I use this? So, I showed it to them, okay? But, here's the thing, no? Nung ginagawa ko yun, alam niyo yung parang, sige, ganito lang yan, akin na, papakita ko kung paano. Tapos, nung ginagawa ko na, okay, pinapakita ko sa kanila, Hindi ko mahiwalay yung Lego na na, na nandoon na we have to separate. So medyo na frustrate na ako, no? medyo napapahiya na ako na parang hindi ganito lang 'yan, sabi ko pa parang ang dali-daling sabihin. But you know what? Here's what I realize. How many of us we have those kind of moments? Hindi ganito lang 'yan. Hindi ba yung parang sige ako na magbubukas nung ano, button. Na, na, na try niyo na ba 'yun? Means ako na nga madali lang 'yan. Tapos nung ginagawa mo na, akala mo you know it all already or you're strong enough to do it, but then it turns out that you actually cannot do it. Wow. You thought you're strong enough, you thought you know it already how to do it, and then nung ginagawa mo na, Hindi pala. Nung nandun ka na, hindi pala. You know, in the same way, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses 12 to 13, you know, and this is our focus for uh, tonight, no? yung 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Sabi dun, if you think you are standing strong, if you think you know everything already, if you think kaya mo, ka, kaya mo na lahat and all, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different with what others experience. How about this in Tagalog? Ito medyo mas masakit to sa Tagalog, no? Kaya kung iniisip nyo na matatag na kayo sa inyong pananampalataya, mag-ingat kayo at baka mahulog kayo sa kasalanan. Walang pagsubok na dumarating sa inyo na hindi naranasan ng ibang tao. Grabe no, umpisa pa lang no, medyo parang masakit na no. Be careful that you do not fall if you think you are standing strong or you know it already. But you know, I'm glad na yung verses na to na binabasa natin, it didn't end there. It it when you read uh, continuously in verse 13, sabi doon, and God is faithful. 
Can you repeat that with me? And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. So, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. So, again, this was Paul uh, who wrote this letter. He wrote this letter to our church in Corinth during that time. Last week, no, when we started this, um, uh, yung series na to, Right Choice, kung mapapansin nyo, this is actually a book study. So, for the next six weeks, we are looking at this letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. So, first Corinthians. And we're looking at this, how can we honor God with our lives? No? And ironically, when we read first Corinthians, ang makikita nyo doon is this, how not to do it. No? How not to, um, yun ang basically makikita nyo. Why? Kasi ang makikita nyo doon kung ano yung mga ginagawa ng Corinthian Church na hindi nakaka-honor kay God. So we should, kung baga pag binabasa mo yung uh, uh, first Corinthians, ang mapapansin mo, it's actually how not to do it, no? yung mga bagay na yun. Kasi nga, yun yung mga issues na ina-address ni Paul in that church in Corinth during that time because they were not honoring God in so many ways. Even after they have already believed in Jesus Christ, even after they were already made new, they were already made righteous because of the gospel. And you know, there are a lot of issues na binanggit si Paul or inaddress ni Paul in 1 Corinthians. One of those na nga yung pinag-usapan natin last week, which is about purity, no? Or living our lives uh, by honoring God with our bodies. And today, one of the issues na titingnan ulit natin is this, the issue of idolatry. No? In fact, I love how Paul uh, started this uh, uh, chapter in chapter 10. No? He was actually letting the, uh, the, the Christians know and remember about what happened with their ancestors or the Israelites during the time of Moses or, or the time in the Old Testament. Sabi niya doon in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 1, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about our ancestors and the wilderness long ago. In fact, in verse 6 to 7, sinabi niya rin, inulit niya ulit yun. These things happened as a warning to us so that we could not crave evil things as they did or worship idols as some of them did. Verse 11, these things happened to them as example for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. So basically, ang sinasabi ni people, guys, kailangan nating matuto sa mga ancestors natin. We have to learn from their mistakes. Meron na ba kayong ganyan minsan? Di ba pag kinakausap tayo ng mga magulang natin, minsan sasabihin nila, kaya ako to sinasabi sa'yo kasi ayaw ko na ulitin mo or mangyari pa sa'yo yung pagkakamali ko. Meron ba kayong mga ganung moments or sa mga, di ba, teleserye na, na pinapanood natin minsan or sa mga movies, di ba, may mga ganyang linyahan minsan. So, Paul was saying, in the Old Testament, may kita natin doon yung cycle ng life ng Israel na paulit-ulit lang na nangyayari. Maniniwala sila kay God, tapos after noon, uh, receive nila yung blessing, umu-okay yung life nila, tapos ayan na naman, babalik na naman sila sa cycle. They're gonna start worshipping other idols or worshipping other gods and then they will uh, get or experience the consequences of their sins and then they will repent kay God and then maniniwala ulit sila kay God and then magiging okay naman and then ayan na naman, mag na naman they will start worshipping idols pa ulit, ulit you know, and Paul said that these things are actually a warning to all of us that we should not crave evil things kasi nga matuto na tayo sa nangyari sa kanila alam natin na, na when they started worshiping idols or worshiping other gods grabe na sisira yung buhay nila okay, nawawala sila sa presence ni God nawawala yung favor and blessings ni God sa kanila kasi nga they kept on worshiping other gods or other idols Paul was talking about idolatry. But here's the question, what exactly is idolatry? You know, for all of us, no? Idolatry 
is the worship of idols or excessive devotion to or reverence for some person, wedding person yan, or a thing. An idol is anything that replaces the one true God. No, I think that will be uh, that is enough already to explain to us what is idolatry. It's anything, whether that is a person or a thing, that replaces God. And you know what? Here's what I realize: in our time today, that anything that could replace God in our life is actually a lot, especially in our time today. Maybe no, sa time natin ngayon, it not it's not just a uh, as yung nag-worship ng idol or ng statue na sinasamba natin and all, I believe many of our idols right now, especially to us, the young ones, no, the young people, many of these idols are not necessarily tangible, physical, seen, or recognized with our own eyes because I believe no, there are a lot of idols in our hearts that are usually not seen but dwells in our hearts in our minds in our, in our souls sometimes nga no we don't usually recognize this right away na idol na pala to nagiging idol na pala to sa heart ko it's starting to replace god already sa pwesto sa puso natin or sa buhay natin let me explain it further look at colossians 3 verse 5 sabi doon put to death Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Diba? Earthly nature. Meaning to say, that's not tangible, that's not physical. So, ano yung mga sinasabi niya? Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is what? Idolatry. So, yung sinasabi natin kanina na definition ng idolatry, anything that replaces God. It replaces God because it means that we desire other things more than God. Wow. Let me repeat that once again. No? Kaya nga sabi ko, I think it, it, it's not just confined with the statue that worshiping, blah, 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 ganyan. But it's anything that replaces God. It's anything that replaces God because it means we desire other things more than, higit pa, sa Panginoon. Whatever that idol is, or sometimes whoever that idol is. You know, ang ganda sa Colossians 3, 5, no? binanggit doon, lust. Okay. What is lust? It's obsessively or passionately desiring something other than God. So, yung lust, no? hindi lang to about yung sexual uh, thing na lust. No? But it's anything na obsessively we are desiring this thing other than God. Kaya here's my question for all of us, no? Para ma-identify natin, nagiging idol na ba tong bagay na to, or itong idea na to, or itong desire na to? We can ask this question actually to ourselves. What is your heart's greatest desire? Ano yung pinakadine desire ng puso mo? Question, is it God or is it something else? You know, sometimes, no, idol could be something na maganda naman, okay naman. Diba? Like, for example, success. You want to have a good life. You want to have a great career, a good future. You want to graduate with honors, with Latin honors. Okay yung mga bagay na yun. But, is it already consuming you? What do I mean by that? Yan na lang ba yung nagiging drive mo? Yung nagko-consume ng heart mo? And all na nawawala na si God sa picture? What do I mean by this? You know, you can actually tell something if it's already an idol, if it's like this. no? If nakakompromise na yung, uh, number one, nakakompromise na yung devotion mo. Kay Lord, kasi nga, you're so consumed with all these things, no? Okay naman na sobrang aral ka, you wanna do this, you wanna achieve this and all. Pero kamusta yung devotion mo kay Lord? Do you still, are you still able to spend time with Him? Maybe, no, that could be a gauge already na, um, 
Si Lord pa ba talaga yung nangunguna sa buhay ko? Or ito na yung nagko-consume sa akin? What else? You know, another good question that we can ask ourselves para ma- malaman natin, nagiging idol na ba sa buhay ko? Yung pera ba? Yung success ba? Nagiging idol na siya? Yung relationship ba na gusto ko? Nagiging idol na siya sa buhay ko? You know, a good question to assess if it's becoming an idol already is this. Ask the question, kung wala ako nito, okay lang ba ako? Kung wala, kung hindi ko man makuha to or ma-achieve to, okay pa rin ba ako? Mamu-worship ko pa rin ba si God? Mahal ko pa rin ba si God? Or sisisihin ko ba si God? Or ayoko na, ginawa ko naman lahat, tas ayoko na rin pati kay God. You know, that's actually a good question. If wala ka nung mga bagay na to, na gustong-gusto mong magkaroon ka or ma-achieve mo, okay ka pa rin ba? You know, I think that would be a good question. What is our heart's greatest desire? You know, just like what I've said earlier, this anything that could replace God is actually a lot. No, marami tayong pwedeng maisip. But I just wanna uh, share to us just two things no, that I think is very common among us, especially to us, the young people. Number one is this, materialism. Okay? The idol of wanting to have this and that. It could be for the reason, I want this kasi parang I, I could feel belong. No? Minsan nakikita natin yung identity natin doon. Pag meron ako nito, I feel like no, parang uh, I'll be friends with this group of people or I have that certain um, ano ba, image. Yeah, no? So many reasons either sometimes to feed our ego. If meron lang ako nito, okay na ako. And then when you have that thing already, mapapansin mo you're craving for another thing na naman nagkakaroon ng ano discontentment no wala na tayong contentment sa puso natin it's a never ending cycle of wanting more now please don't get me wrong it's not bad to want something like gusto mo ng gadget gusto mong mag-upgrade ng mga uh, equipment mo gusto mo ng clothes ng bags in the future you want to have your own car you want to have your own house walang masamang maghangad sa mga bagay na to but the question is this, what is the real motive of your heart? Is that, it's that the only thing that's driving you already to live this life? No? Papagurin ko yung sarili ko, I'm gonna uh, do everything on my own just to get this, just to achieve this, even if sometimes may matatapakan ka na. Or, worst is, compromise na yung faith mo. Baka, it's an idol already in your heart. Right? Okay ka lang ba kahit wala ka ng mga bagay na to? If hindi mo makuha itong parang tagal mo nang pinaghihirapan or you've been wanting this, you've been wanting to achieve this or to get this, what if hindi yan yung para sa'yo? Are you still okay with it? Will you still worship God? Will you still desire God even without these things? Second, no, na common, I think, na idol in our generation is this. The self. The idol of the self. You know, sa totoo lang guys, by the way, no, nung pineprepare ko tong message na to, medyo mahirap, mabigat tong message na to kasi all of us were not uh, exempted no, to fall into the sin of idolatry. The idol of the me, myself, and I. As if the world revolves around us. No, we always, sino kayang nagpa-follow sa akin? Sino kayang nakapansin ng post ko? This and that. No, or ito, no, the never ending. We are so concerned with what other will think about us. We are so concerned with what other people may, might say about us na minsan nga, na-anxious ka na eh. Yung minsan na, oh, na ang dami ko nakausap na ganito, ano, nag-overanalyze ka na kasi baka ganito, iniisip nila, ang tamad ko masyado, or baka may misunderstood ako, blah, 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 kanyan. It's a trap, no? To wanting to please others. This idol actually, for me, has two phases. Number one is this. First idol, so wanna build up your image. Sige, gagawin kong lahat. So para ganito tingin nila sa akin, I look good on the outside, no? Again, that sometimes, okay naman, no? You are, ano, hardworking, blah, blah, blah. Um, excellent ka sa ginagawa mo. But, 
No? Ang mahirap doon is if you forget already who brought you to where you are at right now. Yun ang masakit, no? Yung minsan pinag-pray mo, Lord, bless mo ako. Lord, gawin mo akong excellent dito. Lord, bigyan mo ako ng favor dito. Tapos binigay sa'yo ni Lord. Kaso nung nandun ka na, nakalimutan mo na si Lord. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a, actually a time for you to heart check again. To recheck. Si Lord pa ba nangunguna sa buhay ko? Or ano na, napuno na ako ng sarili ko? Am I all full of myself already? On the other hand, the, anad, uh, the other phase of the self-idol is this. When you look down on yourself naman, na hindi, ganito lang talaga ako. Nakita nyo, extreme siya. You work hard so much, you wanna be excellent, you wanna build up this, uh, you know, image of you, your brand, this and that. Walang masama, but again, the danger of that is if you forget God. On the other hand, you're pulling down yourself, you're putting down, you're looking down on yourself. Nandito lang ako and all. Do you know that that's actually still an idol? You know why? Anong common dun sa dalawang example na binigay ko? It's still about yourself. It's still about the me, myself, and I. So whether you put yourself up or you put yourself down, the, 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 the point is, it's still about ourselves. And that still is an idol. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 na binasa natin, again, yan yung ina-address ni Paul. Uh, particularly, specifically, Paul was actually, yung idolatry na kanyang uh, in-address during this time is the idol, again, yung worshiping other gods. Kasi they, Christian na sila, and then na, nabalitaan niya, some of these people are still uh, worshiping or doing pagan practices. Uh, they're still in the pagan temples and all. And so Paul was saying, you're no longer that person. You do not bow down to these gods anymore because we only have one God. So it's actually a very simple message, pero it needs digging deeper in our hearts. You get what I mean, guys? Kasi ang dali lang to. Let's not worship idols. Let's not worship other gods. Sa, sa totoo lang, ganun. Pero we have to realize kasi, no, the reason why we're having this preaching is we have to dig deeper in our hearts ano na yung mga bagay sa buhay natin at puso natin na nahayaan natin na na-replace na or na-exchange na si God sa nararapat niya na pwesto sa puso at sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. Again, sometimes it doesn't have to be a bad thing already. Minsan, it's a good thing. It's a dream that we want. It's an achievement. It's a, it's a, a thing that we want to have in our lives. Pero if we are so consumed with it already that God has been, alam mo yun, set aside already, then I think that is already a sign that it has become an idol. So, here's the question as we, about, as we are about to end. What shall we do then? Again, sabi ko nga kanina, if it's a, gonna be a simple message, this is it. Worship God and Him alone. That's the very thing. That's the very first thing. No? Worship God and Him alone. Let's embrace that truth. There's no other God that we will bow down to. Jesus declared that He is the only Lord. He is the Lord of all. Not money, not fame, not success, not achievements, not ourselves, not the church, not your leader, but we only worship God and Him alone. I love how specific 1 Corinthians 10. Look at the verses 23 to 24 and 31. Sabi dito, You say, I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. I love this. Now, sa totoo lang, yun nga, again, we are allowed to do anything. We're allowed to want something, to achieve something, no? Okay yun, but not everything is good and not everything is beneficial for you. Again, ang magiging gauge natin dyan is, is this compromising my faith already? Is this compromising my relationship already with God? Is this compromising the Word of God already? Right? So, worship God in Him alone. I love this, no? Let's not just avoid what is harmful, but pursue what is good. Let's not just avoid 
no na ako yung, hindi ko na yan nourish ako yung, hindi ko na yan gugustuhin or I'll be very careful no not only that but let's pursue what is good what do I mean by that let's pursue the purposes of God this is what I'm saying no um si si Lord ba yung nagsasabi sa yon na Sige, uh, i-desire mo yan. Sige, ipag-pray mo yan. Uh, you know, I- I'm going medyo ano na, no, f- uh, f- uh, f- uh, farther from the preaching. But just a tip for all of us. Di ba, minsan hindi natin alam kung ano yung pag-pray natin. Naranasan nyo, bro, ba yun? Yung parang, may mga common prayers ka naman na, Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for blessing me and all. Pero sometimes, so, parang you, you, you are led to pray for something. Pero ano mang pag-pray ko? You know, you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to pray for? Minsan, yung mga nililid sa atin nga ni Holy Spirit are the things na we're not comfortable about, eh. Parang pag-pray ko ba talaga to, Holy Spirit? Eh, kaso napaka-imposible nito. No, pag-pray ko pa talaga, you want me to, uh, pag-pray ko to have an open door to be part of a student council, for example, or a leadership role or position in in the campus. No, pero parang ako, comfortable naman ako where I am at right now. But, sige, pag nung nag-pray ka, nilid ka ng Holy Spirit, pag-pray mo pa rin for an open door for you to be able to lead. Nakita nyo yung difference, guys, na yung ginugusto mo lang, dahil gusto mo lang, Diba? The difference is that ito, because alam ko merong nililid sa akin si Lord, may nililid sa akin si Holy Spirit to want this or to pray about it. Ang laking difference guys, kasi ito, minsan by flesh na to eh, kasi dahil nainggit ka lang, ay buti pa siya may ganito, or buti pa siya, sige nga, I want this also, I'll do everything on my power. Ito naman, Lord, I want your will. I just want to follow where you are leading me. Don't just avoid what is harmful. Wag mo lang, hindi, ay, sige, ayoko yung gawin. No, pursue what is good. Ask the Holy Spirit where He is leading you. Not only for your own good, ito yung I love din, no? Pag binasa niyo yung context ng 1 Corinthians din, uh, chapter 10, not only for your own good, not only for your benefit. In fact, what Paul was saying, do it for others also. Ito nga yung sinasabi yung sa pagan practices nila or sa pagan foods that are offered in the temple. Sabi niya, especially if it stumbles other people. no? Avoid mo na yan. Not only to avoid, but pursue what is good. Help these people. Don't just think about yourself, but think about these people around you. Okay? Verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I want to end with this. Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. One of the ways of how we can avoid idolatry and how we can continue to live honoring God is to always do it for the glory of God. Not for ourselves, not to please other people, not to make a name for ourselves. Because at the end of the day, guys, lahat naman tayo, isa lang naman ng kahinat na natin lahat. Tama ba? Napag-usapan na natin to in one of our youth services. All of us will die one day. Right? And there's, wala, walang anything dito sa mundo na madadala natin sa kamatayan natin or sa eternity. In fact, when we are joined together with the Lord, it's all, uh, all our focus will be Jesus Christ alone. All our focus would be for the glory of God. And so in the same way, while we are still living here on earth, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. There will be a lot of temptations that will replace God in our lives. Sometimes it's a good thing. You know, sometimes it's very obvious that it's a sin, it's a bad thing. So, iwasan na natin yun. Flee from it, sabi nga, di ba, natin last week. But whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Lord, I want to live a life that will honor you. Lord, tulungan mo ko. Lord, tulungan mo ko na hindi ako mag-fall into this temptation. Lord, help me to always desire you more than anything else. Yes, pleasurable tong isang bagay na to. Yes, okay to. Everybody's doing it in this world. It's the, uh, so, uh, yung mga kaibigan ko, kasi hindi pa sila kristyano and all, and they say, okay lang naman to. But Lord, you are already the greatest desire of my heart. And my desire is to honor you and to glorify you. Amen? Even if no one is looking at you. Even if you're just alone. Sabi doon, whatever you do, 
whether you eat, whether you drink, whether you're alone in your room, whether you're with, your, with other people, whether you're inside the church, whether you are with your friends who are not yet Christians, whether with your family, whether with strangers, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We worship God in Him alone. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much, God, for your word for us today. It could sound very difficult, Lord God, to take in or to chew. But Lord, this is the reality. Lahat kami, Panginoon, we are tempted every day. We are not exempted, Lord. We could fall into the sin of idolatry. But Father, I pray na tulungan mo ang bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon, that we will stay on the course, stay on the path that you have prepared for us, Lord God, that you will be our greatest desire. You are our heart's desire, Lord God, to honor you and to glorify you. Father, I pray na protektahan mo ang bawat isa sa amin every time that we are tempted to veer away from you or to replace you in our hearts. Lord, tulungan mo kami with the help of your word, Lord. Remind us always, Lord, Lord ang salita mo, Panginoon, buhay at nangungusap ang salita mo. And so, Father, I also pray this, God, na we're not just gonna do actions, Lord God, but we will really be intentional to deposit your word into our hearts and into our lives. Because, Lord, yung salita mo, dahil buhay yan, yan, Panginoon, yung mag-aayos ng puso namin, mag-aalay ng isipan namin, Lord God, so that we will be able with the actions, with our decisions, Lord God, it will be an honor to you. If we will be able to honor you. We will be able to glorify you, Lord God, with every area of our lives, with our actions, with our decisions, with our words, Lord. Lord, help us, Lord God. I pray, God, na strengthen mo yung faith namin, pananampalataya namin sa you, Lord God. And I pray also, Lord, that we will learn from the mistakes of, you know, the other people around us or yung mga, yun nga, yung mga, uh, stories, mga lessons sa Bible, Lord, I pray we will take it to heart, Lord God, and we will not repeat those mistakes again. And we will live a life that will honor you, a life that will give glory back to you. This is our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to invite everyone right now. It's fitting for us because we're talking about this to give the glory back to God. Let's all worship God and praise Him, glorify Him with our hearts, even with our lips. Let's go and worship God right now. standing here on holy ground our hearts in all of you we bow down through the fire your voice is ringing out in your presence may my life be found Adonai El Shaddai you are God Almighty age to age you remain the great I am holy all the saints cry holy who compares to you our awesome God glory and majesty you reign now so good in all your ways our awesome are waiting here 
for holy power All lives ransomed by the Savior's blood Tongues of fire come fall afresh on us With your presence come and send us out Adonai El Shaddai you are God God for that word, that time of worship. I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to align our hearts, Lord. I pray, God, that we will have that conviction to live a life that will honor you. We bless your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you so much everyone for joining us in our online youth service. If itong message na to has blessed you, has encouraged you, feel free to share it to your friends. We have a link for our YouTube, in our Facebook page. Go ahead and we hope and we pray that we'll be able to spread the word of God towards other people. God bless everyone and we'll see you again next week. Thank you.